you're starting to learn, right? You're, yeah. you're, you're training, you're, you're building a muscle by like creating these videos and getting feedback and seeing what works and what doesn't. I feel like just from having an audience, you give yourself so many possibilities. Welcome back to Business Talk, the TikTok marketing podcast for business owners and entrepreneurs who want real strategies to generate leads and sales directly from TikTok. I'm your host, Austin Armstrong, and I'll be interviewing real business owners from every industry that are leveraging TikTok to actually grow their business. You can connect with me on TikTok at Socialty Pro. Let's jump into it. Today's guest is Mike Rama, the founder of Brands Meet Creators, a TikTok marketing agency that helps content creators land brand deals and helps brands to grow on TikTok. I've been connected with Mike on TikTok for quite a while now, maybe over, uh, almost a year since he started creating content on the platform. Uh, and he was kind enough to have me on his podcast last week. So I, of course, had to return the favor and help him share his wisdom and everything that he's been doing awesome for himself and for his clients with, with all of you. But Mike, thanks so much for joining me today, brother. Austin, what's going on, man? Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, it's going to be great. So tell everybody a little bit more about you. Tell about your, your company. Um, jump into it, man. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so I guess I'll start it off uh, when I got on TikTok. That was a little over a year ago. So I want to say January of 2021 uh, was when I really jumped into TikTok. And when I first got on the platform, I didn't, one, I didn't know what I was doing on TikTok. It was brand new to me. Two, it, it wasn't like I had a, you know, a concrete, uh, you know, offering that I was promoting. I was just in the marketing world. You know, I was running Facebook ads and YouTube ads here and there for some clients. And I was like, I'm just going to talk about marketing on TikTok. So that's kind of how I started out. That's just how I went about it. It's just talking about different strategies, uh, different things I'd done before, building funnels, building websites, just giving out value left and right. Um, from there, I landed like my first couple deals here and there, like brand deals also like helped to, you know, bring in a couple other clients. And from there, I really shifted towards, okay, I see this huge vision of TikTok, right? And I started getting questions uh, from other people too. It's like, Hey, I see what you're doing for your business on TikTok. Like, tell me a little bit more about that. Like, what, like what's going on there? And at the same time, where I see kind of TikTok going like this, I kind of see Facebook ads going the exact opposite direction, you know? And that's when I have a choice. I'm like, okay, do I just completely pull the plug and like I stop focusing on Facebook ads? And it's just like I'm going all in on TikTok. And that was kind of the you know decision that I arrived at. Um, and with that, yeah, I decided just to go all in on the platform. One of the best decisions that I've made, built up the agency to where it is now, where we connect content creators and brands. So we help content creators on that side of business to find brands that they can work with, kind of show them, okay, this is how you should go about the process. Here's how you should do your pricing. And then on the brand side, we help them to find these creators to work with, to build them a strategy, uh, to just get them growing on the platform. That's awesome, man. Now, were you, did you have your own agency before this or did the agency sort of start afterwards? Were you freelancing before or were you working for another agency? Yeah. So I'll, I'll take you uh, kind of way back. Yeah, so I was working, uh, I was working a corporate job up in New York city. I was in like the data analytics, marketing analytics space for a while pandemic hit. And prior to the pandemic, I had constantly done, you know, the whole side hustle phase, right. I was doing drop shipping, Amazon FBA, the Shopify store, the print on demand, everything. Right. And I'd always loved like the marketing portion, like growing an Instagram page and like, and running Facebook ads. I've always, I've always loved that. And when the pandemic hit, um, the, you know, current side hustle at the time for me was I was running paid ads, Facebook and YouTube for some affiliate offers, like high ticket programs, uh, where I would get, you know, thousand dollar commission every time I sold one of these. And that was one of these first like side hustles that really took off for me that I was actually making like a considerable amount of money for. And I, I came to this decision, like, all right, I'm going to quit my job and go in on all in on this. So I quit my job in August or September of 2020, moved to Mexico. Yeah. Thank you. Round of wow, applause. Wow. Um, one of the most like pivotal decisions I've had in my life and so glad that I did it. With that, moved to Mexico with a buddy of mine who was doing something very similar. 
And I continued to just do that, you know, get more into the Facebook ad world, the YouTube ad world. And like, I wouldn't really say the agency was really an agency. It was more of like a freelance kind of like side hustle thing at the time, but it was enough, you know, to pay the bills uh, and to, you know, allow me to travel and, and live that lifestyle. So what drew you to, to TikTok? Cause TikTok had been around a couple of years before you had really jumped on there. Yep. Um, what were your original opinions on it? Did you just see it as like a new thing? Let's see what's going to happen here a little bit. Let it build up some momentum or like, what was that tipping point for you to actually get on there and give it a shot? Yeah. So initially I actually hated TikTok as a consumer, right? Like I would have friends that I was on it and I'd be like, dude, you're just getting like sucked into that thing. Like delete that app. What are you doing? Uh, so I initially had really strong feelings against it from the like consumer mindset of, I don't want to be on that platform because I'm like, it's just another thing now that's going to like suck up my time. Um, when I was in Mexico, I was just hearing more and more whispers about the platform. Like my roommate at the time, uh, he was doing sales calls and like more people were, would kind of bring up TikTok on the call. Uh, my sister was kind of encouraging us. She was like, Hey, you know, I know some people who are doing really well on TikTok, like from a business standpoint. And I had never thought of the platform as like, oh, that could be used for business. Um, people still just, don't see it that way. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people still don't see it like that. Um, so there was never really like one moment. It was a lot of these like little like whispers that ultimately got me to make the jump onto that platform. That's great, man. And and you said it. it you didn't really have much of a strategy at first, right? You were just kind of testing the waters out, seeing what mm -hmm. was up, sharing some helpful advice. Can you talk through that, the early phases of what type of content you were creating and what sort of clicked for you? When did the momentum right. begin? So a couple of things. One is I think that actually is something that helped me is going into it. I didn't have like a concrete, like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to sell this thing. Right. A lot of people, that's what they do. They're like, oh, I have this thing I'm trying to sell. So I'm going to make videos about it. And I didn't really have that. For me, it was more like, okay, I'm just going to talk about marketing principles, tactics, uh, things that I've learned. And so I was truly just like putting value out there and like building connections, building a community. Um, so I think that's something that really helped me. And looking back, I see how powerful that was that like, I didn't just day one, just come out of the gates, just like trying to sell something on TikTok, which is what, what most people do. Um, the other thing is I've never really had a, like one of those like viral exponential moments for me, it's just been like very consistent over the mm -hmm. past year. Mm -hmm. Um, which I think there's pros and cons. I can't really speak from experience on the side of going viral. Uh, but one thing that I say a lot to, to my followers is like, maybe, you know, you're not ready for it. Uh, because if I, if I rewind, you know, eight months ago, let's say I go viral and my account goes to, you know, 200,000 followers, I wouldn't have really been able to take advantage of that. Right. I didn't really have the systems in place. I didn't have the, the funnels in place, the lead captures, the whole processes in place to like really capitalize on that. Um, so I do think that like that slow and steady growth that I've had over the past year is it's been something that's, uh, been tremendously valuable for me. That's phenomenal. I love that perspective as well, because I, I see that a lot happen too, right? A lot of people will randomly have a video go viral and that they don't have the systems in place. They don't know how to, to monetize, to capture that audience and retain it. And then it's just a disaster waiting to happen, right? Because maybe that video was viral for something totally unrelated to what they're creating and what they consistently do, mm -hmm. which leads to burnout. Um, you know, I see this all the time. Like I, I had a buddy uh, a couple of weeks ago, he went viral. He's a real estate agent, a realtor, uh, EXP agent. He had a video, uh, did about 5 million views, only gained him about 10,000 followers. Still not, not too bad though, yeah, from, from nothing, but it really had nothing to do with real estate. And now yeah, all of his cool. videos are, you know, they're, they're doing better because he's got more followers, but all of these people that, that tuned into that video, have like they followed him for something that he's not creating consistent content for. So you kind of get in that trap a little bit, right? 
Yeah. And then that kind of stunts your future growth. If you think about it from like the algorithm, think about it from the algorithm perspective, because a lot of your early views come from followers, right? So let's say, let's take this, uh, this example, real estate agent, they followed him because of, I don't know what the video was, but for the unrelated topic. And now when his video comes out, that's a real estate topic. A lot of those initial views are now going to his followers who don't care. And so what happens is they don't watch it. They don't like it. They don't comment. That sends signals to TikTok and TikTok now goes, oh, this video sucks. We're not going to show it out anymore. And so that's, it's this like, you know, this, um, yeah, you said it's like a trap. Exactly. So now, now your videos are getting shown to people who don't really care about you. So it can, uh, ultimately like stunt the growth too. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, what's your content creation process look like? now has it evolved at all like are you are you batching content are you creating content every day can you walk us through what that process looks like it has evolved a ton over the year um i play around with a ton of different ton of different methods but the one that's like really stuck is batch content creation with a little bit of um filming when i feel inspired so i'm personally a very structured person in terms of like my day and how I like structure my day. I like to have everything planned. Like it's actually funny. I was like, I was like planning out my day tomorrow, like already right now. So like I write down like every hour of what I'm doing. So typically once or twice a week, I'll just, you know, block out three hours where I'm going to film my content for that week. And then throughout the week, I like to come up with ideas. I just leave a, a running notes tab in my phone So whenever I'm on TikTok or whenever an idea pops into my head, I don't forget that. I'll, you know, copy the video. I'll write a couple words like, oh, use this as the hook, say this, whatever. So I'll have that in my notes. So then when it's time to film, I have you these three hours blocked off. I'm not really thinking of ideas. I'm just kind of executing. And when I do those two, I'm typically not even editing. I'm just filming. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I like to do a lot of my editing, either like, I call it during like wasted time. It'll be like in between sets at the gym or like while I'm, uh, you know, eating dinner or something along those lines, I'll kind of just edit the videos quickly, but yeah, that's, that's most of my content creation process. Occasionally I'll have the like inspiration where it's like, Oh my God, I, I want to shoot this right now. It's something that's like very timely. It's very relevant. I need to get it out. Or it's like, I just have this idea and I just want to do it right now. I'll just, you know, take 10 minutes and film it. Uh, but that's that's where the majority of the content comes from. I want to dig a little bit deeper, if you don't mind, too, because, um, you know, I those aha moments come for a lot of people. But a lot of people, in order to get started, really need that that structure in place. Right. They okay. might have an idea like, yeah, I, I know I need to create content. Um, I ha- like I can talk about the services that I offer or the products that I offer. Right but I don't know how to specifically structure every single video. How do you structure every single video? So you, you have a a topic idea. Talk about that too. Like, how do you, how do you form your topics? How do you choose which topics you want to talk about? And then from that opening hook, from those opening seconds, how are you actually structuring each individual video? Yeah. Great question. Um, I'm going to kind of work like, like backwards from this actually. So one thing I like to do is to like recreate videos and frameworks that I already have that work really well. Right. So when I have something that's like, it blows up, it crushes it. Now it's like, okay, how do I take that same exact style? And like, how do I kind of reproduce that with maybe a different hook, a different topic, different like backgrounds, whatever it is. Same thing that I'll, that I'll kind of coach clients through, right. They make 30 videos in a month. And two of them go crazy. It's like, all right, let's make more of those. Like, keep, let's let's keep doing this. Oh yeah. Um, now, now the thing is, how do you how do you get to that point, right? How do you get those first ones? And I think early on, it's all about continuing to test those different frameworks. So I know you mentioned like, how do you come up with the hook? How do you do this? Like, I don't think there's just one set. Like, hey, this is how you do it. This is how you win because it's different for everyone. It's different depending on like your audience and your account. Definitely. So I think it's. So I think it's like a, an experimental process where you're testing new things out. And so it really comes down to now, how do you test these things out? Like, where do you get these ideas from? And to me, a lot of times it's like, I'll come up with an idea, right? So, so we have a, a concept and now going from with that concept is like, 
a couple of things. How can I tell a story with this concept? How can I take this concept and make it a 12 second video? How can I take this concept to make it a one minute video? How can I take this concept and use the voiceover feature? How can I use the green screen feature? And just like, instead of just like, oh, I have this idea. Let me just quickly like, just talk to the camera and like say a couple things, but like taking a step back and thinking like, okay, what different ways can I present this information? And then just testing a bunch of them and like seeing what works. And then eventually you'll get to a point where it's like, you kind of have an idea of like, what's going to work and what's not going to work. Although TikTok always, you know, surprises you on what you think is going to work. Um, but you start to get like a better sense of that as you go. And so I think early on, I made a video about this. So many people will tell you like, oh, you got to post three times a day. You got to post five times a day. And for me early on, I think you do need a lot of posting volume, but it's not necessarily because those posts are going to, you know, really catch on and they're going to go viral and you're going to grow. It's that like you're getting the reps and you're starting to learn, right? You're, you're, you're training, you're, you're building a muscle by like creating these videos and getting feedback and seeing what works and what doesn't. So good, man. I, I have, I agree with that mindset so much. And I see so many new, like, you know, TikTok gurus, TikTok coaches jumping into the scene. Right. And, and they have that, that exact, like you need to post three to five videos every single day, but they don't necessarily explain why. And I don't think there is a, a magic number. I think the, the psychology and the mindset there is exactly what you said. It, it, it's more at bats, right? It gives you more opportunity to fail faster and it builds that muscle of you consistently creating content because that consistency is what really matters here in the long run. Like you're doing phenomenal. You have 70,000 followers or just about, or somewhere, 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 in, that, room, right? somewhere in that ballpark. I, somewhere I get in that the uh, official number while we're, while we're talking. Yeah. And, and none of them have been viral, as you said, like, uh, I know you've had some, some pretty decent uh, hits, um, but that consistency is really what pays off. And that is just such an important aspect there too. So I, I love that mindset. So powerful. I want to pivot a little bit. Well, all right, before we get into the monetization side of things, I want to see your thoughts on uh, some of the more granular topics, like, mm -hmm. um, your opinion on hashtags and length of video in particular, if you have, because I know your hands on the pulse with managing other yeah. clients as well. Uh, this is more of a selfish question. Everybody else, you just listen in on, on, uh, on two people that helped uh, TikTok uh, creators out. What's your, what's your opinion on, on hashtags, no hashtags, number of hashtags, uh, yeah. length of video? So we'll start with hashtags. Um, I don't think that they play like a huge role in the number of views that you get. Here's what I do think hashtags are good for. And I've seen this in action. I think that, and I think they're becoming more and more like this kind of like a search feature, like a search functionality. And it's a way that people can find you, especially like very, very targeted people. So you yourself coming from, you know, that the SEO world, um, I think of them almost as like long tail keywords, right? For yeah. example, um, one time I was searching for a, a lawyer, uh, for like specifically to help with contracts in like the influencer marketing content creation world. And I wanted someone who knew TikTok. And so I'm on TikTok searching for hashtags. And I think I searched like content creator lawyer or like influencer marketing lawyer. And like, that leads me exactly to whoever is top ranking for that. You know, I get on a phone with them and then I end up working with them. Um, and like people have, uh, people have done the same with me. They'd say, Mike, I'd say, oh, how'd you find me? They say, oh, on TikTok. Some people would be like, oh, you know, I've been following you forever. Some people will be like, oh, I was specifically looking for like a TikTok agency. And I typed in like hashtag TikTok agency and you came up. And so I found you. And so I, I think hashtags, they, they're really good at uh, basically indexing your videos in terms of like getting you more exposure. I don't think that using like certain hashtags, like using FYP or whatever is going to like <laughs> get you more exposure. Um, it, it might be helpful early on while TikTok's still trying to figure out who your audience is. I think that could be a good way to help like train the algorithm. But outside of like those things that I mentioned, I haven't seen a huge difference, right? It's also one of the things that's like, everyone has a theory, but it's like, it's kind of hard to test it out. Um, and I just haven't seen that data to show me that like, 
hashtags are super important outside of this search feature. Mm -hmm. So that's a thought on hashtags. Um, what was the, what was the part two of the question? Length of videos. Are mm -hmm. you going for longer? Are you going for shorter? Are you trying to like loop content around to increase that rewatch rate? What's right. your stance on, on length of video? Right. So again, I don't think it's like a, a one size fits all, but a couple things I noticed, like one TikTok is starting to push longer and longer. So like they just did the, like yeah. the 10 minute 10 video minute, release. Wow, that's crazy. Which is nuts. Yeah. Uh, I remember, I remember when they did the three minute, that was nuts. Um, so like they're pushing longer and typically when platforms release new features, they typically give benefits to people who use those features. So they're kind of telling us what they like, what they, at least what they want, I guess. in it's almost like a competition um, for eyeballs with YouTube, I would say. Yeah. And so, especially for someone like you and I, who's in more of like the educational space, I think these longer videos are getting more and more powerful. Uh, like if you can do a really like put together, you know, 90 second tutorial, uh, like those style videos tend to do pretty well. Like I have a lot that do really well that are like 40 plus seconds. But then on the flip side, if you can get something that's like super engaging, that's like a, a 19 second video and you can get everyone to like rewatch that video, it's going to work really well too. You know, at the end of the day, TikTok wants the watch time. So if you have like a minute video that everyone's watching the whole way through, that's going to crush it. If you have a 20 second video and everyone like watches it multiple times again, that's going to crush it. So I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. Uh, the one thing I will say is like, I'm not the biggest fan of these like four to like eight second videos. I just personally don't think it lends itself well to my style and my goals. Like what I really want to do is I want to use my TikTok to one, like help educate people and to build connection, build relationship, which is ultimately going to build my business. And I just don't think like four second videos, there's enough time for me to do that. Right. It's, it's, it might be the right thing for certain people, but for me, I have just more of like an educational style. And so uh, you don't typically see me doing those videos. So you, you, you're saying Mike, you don't like the seven second uh, TikTok hack with the long text on screen. <laughs> I mean, I, I like, I've made, I've, I've probably made like, uh, three or four of them, but yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's not really my style. No, I hear you. I hear you. We got to try those things out. Though. Yeah. And I mean, you'll, you'll see some accounts where it's like, that's all they do. And yeah. like, they're, they're just in sync with the TikTok algorithm. I guess now they're just showing their content to the people who like that stuff. And like those accounts can grow extremely mm -hmm. fast. Like, don't get me wrong. I see some of those accounts where, and it's like, that's all they post is like them on the screen with like some text and that's it. And those things grow. But my thing is, does that convert into what you want it to do? Right. Like, I don't think it does because there's no trust built there. There's no like relationship built up. It's just like, you're kind of finding like this hack and like, I don't know. I don't think it's a long-term strategy. No, I, uh, that's a perfect segue into the, the monetization and conversion side of things. But I think you're, you're absolutely right you have to build up that trust over time. So, you know, the core of marketing is no like, and trust. So ultimately when you put an offer out there, they will buy from you or, or, you know, put their email in a lead capture uh, or anything along the lines of that, because they actually trust you. Mm -hmm. I don't think a seven second uh, text on screen is going <laughs> to make it, make them trust you either. So definitely Not agree with you. Talk about your, how you're monetizing TikTok? Are you leveraging a couple different ways? Do you have a couple different uh, revenue opportunities on there? Are you just capturing leads? How are you turning those leads into actually paying clients and, and revenue? Take it wherever you want to go, brother. Yeah, great question. Um, so historically, we've really focused on monetizing on the brand side of this equation. So my agency, it's called Brands Meet Creators, right? And so we're like, we're like the bridge between two sides. We have this one world of content creators who they're like, how do I get brand deals? You know, how can I start working with brands? And then you have these brands that are like, I hear about this TikTok thing. Like, what the hell do I do? Right. And so we, we try to be the, the bridge that brings those two together. And historically, I say historically, meaning um, since we've been in business, basically outside of this last month, we've completely monetized from the brand side. So more of like a traditional agency route where a brand they'll come to us and they'll say mike we're super interested in getting on tiktok we keep hearing all this stuff about tiktok we know we need to be there we just have no idea what to do help us out 
And so what my company does is first, we come up with a strategy for them. Like, hey, here's what we think you guys should be doing on TikTok, develop that strategy. Then part two, we're going to find them someone who can implement the strategy, going out, finding them a content creator, and then staying on board, just making sure like we're keeping up with that strategy, making optimizations, tweaks, and just ensuring that like we're growing and we're generating business from the account. So that's typically what we've done. And then what that allows us to do too is now I have all this deal flow with brands. I have all these opportunities. So we get content creators coming our way and it was always free. Like, hey, sign up for our newsletter. We'll send out opportunities every week. And people loved it because like we were just giving them away. Like, hey, here's all these potential brands that you can work with. Um, and not like small deals too. You know, we have clients that'll pay 5,000 bucks a month uh, for someone to make them content, which you know, for a lot of people, that's potentially a, a full-time income. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, Absolutely. So, so presenting some pretty like sizable deals. What we recently offered was a little more help one-on-one for content creators, just because I get, I get so many questions from creators that are like, Mike, you know, I, I want some more help landed brand deals. Like, Hey, check out my content. Can you help me out here? And I just don't have the bandwidth for that. Like I get so mm-hmm. many DMS like that every day. And basically all I can say is like, Hey, like, check out the opportunities that we have. If there's none that fit right now, like we'll try to get more. Uh, But I just had so much demand for people like asking like, Hey, I had this brand reach out to me. They offered me, you know, $600. I think they're undercharging. What should I do? And like, I just, I didn't really have the bandwidth to answer all these questions. Uh, So we recently released a creator program where we're basically walking content creators through the whole process from start to finish, how to find these brands, how to, I say, basically how to uh, get in contact with them on, on autopilot. So teaching them how to build systems to actually, you know, bring brand deal opportunities their way on autopilot, how to price themselves. Uh, also, you know, how to build their own email list to potentially launch their own products and services. So really just like, a, a, I call it the full-time content creator roadmap, just giving them all the tools they need to go from, you know, maybe they're earning one to $2,000 a month and they want to step that up to like, five to 10 K a month, just kind of showing them how to get there. Such a fantastic resource, man. So how, how are brands and creators specifically getting a hold of you? Are they, are you like, what's your funnel look like? Are you using a link in your bio? Are you driving them just to your website? Are you driving them to a a link tree or a beacons or any one of the various ones and capturing information there? SEO, like offsite. What's that? It's, look like? it's pretty much all through TikTok right now. Mm-hmm. Um, driving to the link and then I kind of split it off. Are you a brand? Go here. Are you a creator? Go here. Mm-hmm. Brand side, we'll take them down like a free training. Uh, like, hey, here's all the stuff that we do with our clients. Like, here are the things that you should be doing. Um, and like actually provide some value in that training. And at the end, just ask them like, hey, if you want to, you know, go ahead with that, you know, you can implement those strategies. If you want some handholding, you want us to actually do this work for you. Uh, you can schedule a call with either myself or um, our sales guy. And then the content creator side, we actually just released this program uh, it was brand new as of like two weeks ago. So it had originally just been on the content creator side. You put your email in and we send you brand deals every week. And I would just release this program by just sending out a couple of emails to the list and telling people to shoot me a DM if they're interested. And we had over 200 DMs in uh, 48 hours from just sending a couple emails. I love that, man. I, I want to kind of put you on the spot here. Uh, if you don't mind, you don't have to answer. It's up to you. Um, but for all of the, the business owners, entrepreneurs out there that are maybe curious about actually how much money can be made. You've been on TikTok a year. How much, how much money have you made? Yeah. So this year, like January going forward, we're almost at 60,000. Uh-huh. Um, and awesome. since, yeah, since being on TikTok, it's been around 150 K. Congratulations, brother. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Fantastic, man. It's, and it's just it's, going uh, up every month, huh? Exactly. It's exciting. Uh, we're, yeah. we're slowly scaling out. So like it yep. started just me now it's a team of, five of us. I just brought someone new on the other day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have some people who are more like independent contractor roles, like sales guys. Mm -hmm. Um, we're having a team help us build out like a platform and everything. So yeah, it's, uh, there's so many opportunities on the platform and even outside of just like 
just like the pure sales numbers. There's also so many connections and so many opportunities that are made. Like one way I think about it is I, I truly feel like I could really never go broke. Like once you build an audience, like let's say I blow up the agency today. Yep. I feel like I could have 10 opportunities on my lap in a week, just mm-hmm. from TikTok, just because you make so many connections and you just yeah. position yourself as an authority. And like, I would never do this. I mean, never say never, but like, let's say I wanted a job, right? I wanted to like, I'm not going to work for myself again. I want to go lead, you know, be head of influencer marketing somewhere or whatever. I feel like just from having an audience, you give yourself so many possibilities. Yeah. So, so true. So well said too. Like, um, and it's such a blue ocean right now on, on TikTok. Like, yeah, it's the, you know, fastest growing platform ever. That's over a billion users, but it's still wide open in so many different industries, right? Like when I got started on, on TikTok personally, let's talk about SEO stuff that's saturated on YouTube, obviously on Google has been around forever, it's saturated on like every other platform. But literally no one was talking about SEO, search engine optimization on TikTok. And that's why I was able to grow pretty quickly because it's wide open and everybody right. can leverage it right now. No matter what industry you're in, no matter what your expertise in, you can be the go-to person in that industry on TikTok right now. And that is so so powerful and you can leverage it to grow other platforms. You can leverage it to get brand deals. You can leverage it to get a job if you want. It's just such a, a phenomenal platform right now with, with all of the eyeballs in the world looking at it. Mike, what advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur or a business owner that wants to get started on TikTok? Or maybe they've been on it, but they don't have a clear plan of attack. What advice would you give them to start growing and start monetizing? It's a great question. I actually had a conversation with a client yesterday who he's on TikTok. He has an account. It's like a a faceless account. You know, he's kind of like a serial Mm -hmm. entrepreneur. He has a handful of accounts that are like outsourced to other content creators. And he's been like, Mike, I want to create my own, you know, personal brand on here. Like, do you think it's worth it? Should I go ahead with it? And I've had other friends ask me very similar questions. And the thing I'll say is like, you just have to start and just take messy action. Like your first videos are going to suck and you have to be okay with that. And you like, you just have to get over that mental hurdle of you're not going to be amazing day one. No one was amazing day one. Every single person on this platform started with zero followers and like go into it with the mindset that I'm going to do this for a year. And like, if I don't like it after a year, then like I can quit. But if you go into it, like, oh, maybe in two weeks I'll have 10,000 followers and like, I'll hit this viral video. You can't have that, right? You have to go into it with the expectation, like, I'm going to make content for three months straight, even if every single one of my videos get a hundred views and just know that like on the other side of putting in that work, there's so many opportunities. Uh, So really just like getting started and just take messy action. I love that, man. Any final thoughts as we wind down? (sighs) Final thoughts. Um, Yeah. If you're someone who's in that position and you're like, damn, I've been thinking about it for a while. I, I, I don't know. Should I go for it? it was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And like, even I remember creating my first TikTok video, I was not new to creating videos. Like I mentioned, I I'd done like YouTube ads and stuff, made YouTube videos. So I wasn't uncomfortable being on camera, but just the, it's, it's something about just doing something new is very difficult. So even for me, creating that first TikTok took like a week, you know, just coming up with ideas and like, filming and like just being so nervous about putting it out there. Um, So yeah, it's just really something that you have to get past. And if you're considering creating that personal brand, just go all in. It'll be the best decision that you ever make. Powerful words, brother. Mike, how can people get a hold of you if they want to learn more about you, connect with you on TikTok and learn more about Brands Meet Creators? Yeah, I would say just go to my TikTok account. It's Mike.Rama. Uh, that's where you'll find everything. All my other socials are linked up there, but that's the, uh, that's the main hub where you can find me. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much for joining. Austin, it was a good one, man. Take care.